don't think it's necessarily having an awareness of the technology. I don't think you need to know about the technology. Um, but you do need to know about the information. You need to know that data is coming out. Um, you need to be a, accept the fact that it's reliable or understand from your, your IT people that it may not be. Um, but it, you need to use it to make wise decisions. Um, and you can't just take data on face value. You've got to think about how people would feel. Um, you know, and there are plenty of examples out there of um, you know, challenging uh, decisions where people have you know, basically gone for competitive advantage on the basis, you know, we're just going to do this, we're going to take the profit, and without thinking about the downside. And the downside can come up and bite you quite badly. And I think it's everyone's responsibility in business. They're looking for the same things as always. They're looking for new revenue opportunities. They're looking for new markets, new products. So they see the upside. Um, what they don't see is the downside um, and what they often miss out on. And, and I think the, the thing they fail to take into account often is just how traceable um, a lot of this information is. You know, you think that it's anonymous, um, but it's not. Um, every supermarket out there knows an awful lot about you. Every bank knows an awful lot about you. You know, I always joke that, um, you know, Tesco's knows what I'm going to buy before I even leave the house. I just wish since I live 20 miles from the supermarket now, they'd remind me when I get to the store because I have a habit of forgetting it. Um, but, you know, they do know that amount of information and they are using it and they're using it quite blatantly and you know, it's not just them, it's every supermarket to manipulate what it is you do. Um, and the question is, you know, at what point does that cross over from being a benefit to being, you know, something a little bit creepy? One of the options, I think, is a sort of Luddite rebellion in the future where, um, you know, we break all the machines and, and go back. Um, frankly, it's not going to happen. It's about as improbable as the idea of, of the sort of Terminator Skynet view of the future where the machines realize we're all a waste of space and kill all of us. I mean, the, the reality is, at the end of the day, we have to actually learn what it is that we do well as humans. You know, the idea of creativity and ingenuity and what it is that the machines do better. Um, uh, we just need to... Um, you know, the idea that, that youngsters don't care about privacy, I think, is a passing thing. As they get older, they start to be a little more wary. But equally, you know, they're more savvy about knowing just how much information can be gathered. Um, so, you know, people, you can find anything on Google. I mean, the question becomes, is, is it the truth? That's a separate issue. Um, but the information is out there, and uh, they become very good at actually finding it. Um, you know, we know from academic research now that people actually remember how to find things more than they know the, remember the facts themselves. You know. It's just the way things have changed. Yeah, I mean, in terms of um, you know who we've already got in place in terms of the big players. I mean, if, for example, you have two of the the key um, uh, data hosting uh, cloud providers uh, in Ireland already. You know, uh, Microsoft and, and Amazon, AWS reside here. That's just an example of of some of the big players in data hosting um, and, and proximity to that, that data is key when, when looking at big data analytics, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, in terms of the infrastructure side of things, the data center uh, infrastructure is here. It's, it's, it's second to none. I mean, um, uh, you know, the, the, the quality of data centers that we have in Ireland are, are as good as if not better than anywhere else uh, around the globe. Uh, international connectivity is, is extremely good as well. So latency figures uh, back to uh, the US and also across to uh, Europe are, are extremely favorable. Um, and everything that, uh, you know, the, the, the powers that be out there in terms of attracting these global organizations into Ireland really help our cause. So I don't know if it's by uh, design or by fluke, but we, we seem to have managed to attract a lot of these, these big data players into the island of Ireland. And that is an asset in itself. I think you have to look at it probably a little bit more of a holistic way um, around why Ireland is such an attractive location. Um, we've got um, the infrastructure is second to none. I think we can compete with anybody in Europe now from that point of view. So I think we're, we're, we're taking that as a given. Um, but we're also, uh, look at all the other components, look at our tax taxation uh, regime, um, look at our uh, education, look at the, um, you know, the, the, the legislation that's in place. Um, look at uh, the companies that are already in here. Um, if you look at sort of the league tables, why people choose uh, countries to uh, host their commission critical infrastructure, um, Ireland comes in the top two or three in all those criteria. And so when you look at that, um, you know we're now we're now seen as we're in the Premier League effectively uh, when it comes to to, to uh, locations of choice. And that's down to you know the IDA, it's down to Enterprise Ireland, it's down to the work that's done over in the States, it's down to the work that's done locally with the Digital Hub, the IDSC, Connect Ireland, it's down to the universities, it's down to, it's a whole range of professional services, 
taxation, you know, accountancy firms. I mean, everybody's involved in, in, in delivering the same message. But neither myself nor Tanya can deliver that message all the time. We're just talking to our opportunities. It's kind of up to everybody out there to deliver the same message because it's a holistic message rather than just one component. The infrastructure is, it's, it's definitely improved, like in the last couple of years in Ireland, but um, we still have more to, to go and to maintain it, um, just like even comparing it with the UK. But I think there's more, um, there's more um, uh, like attracts like, and I think the, with um, Facebook and all the, I won't go into <laughs> the big corporations coming in, um, other corporations um, are attracted um, and being advertised by the likes of the IDA and Enterprise Ireland to come over to Ireland. So when they see the likes of um, the big corporations coming over, they're thinking, yeah, we'll can, we can come over too and survive and prosper, not only survive, prosper in, in Dublin and Ireland, uh, more than just Dublin. But what's happening is that uh, people are coming over to, say, we'll say Dublin. <laughs> they're coming over to Dublin and what they're getting is um, kind of a... What, what I've been told and what, some of the things I've been to recently, they were saying that they're getting a West Coast feel in Dublin and then the guys who are coming from, from America are sending their, um, the guys from here over there. So it's, um, we're becoming just like an international hub. So first of all, I think it's important to note that this is a horse race going on worldwide. Um, that this is not uh, in Ireland or in Europe, but also in the US, Japan, everywhere. Uh, the data phenomenon is, is happening, and um, the industry, academia, developments are happening as, as well. Investments are happening everywhere. Um, so it's absolutely paramount that Ireland is able to recognize this and also put a pro the appropriate resources into developing this infrastructure ultimately to make this competitive. And uh, the right industry, academia interactions are actually a crucial part part of, 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 of this one. There are new technologies, new bright people who are coming out of, of, of research and they find their way typically then into the companies and influencing how companies work. And that is in fact a long-term perspective which, which, also, which also needs to happen to, despite the need also for, for doing short-term inventions and, and short-term um, de developments. Now what Insight is, Insight is bringing together five of the most recognized centers in Ireland under one common roof, creating ultimately a player which is recognized from, from the outside within Europe and, and, and beyond, creating a critical mass of about 300 research, researchers in, the, in that area, which is on par with the biggest centers elsewhere on, on the planet. And I think that's, that's an important development that is happening, that all of a sudden there is an entity which is able to compete on a, on, on a global scale. So um, inside uh, represents altogether about 72 million euro in investment. Um, it's ultimately a pri public-private partnership together with, uh, with companies. So companies put in altogether an investment of about 30 million euro uh, in, in there. And it combined a number of crucial technologies which we believe are really important to make a difference in a data-driven world.